Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with the top 40 most representative and most fabulous, wonderful list of classical music by composer in the history of mankind. Now, we've been doing this series. That is, if you had to choose only one work by each composer, which would it be for a bit now? We've I posted the list of the top 20, and I'm going to be doing them separately, you know, as, as we accrete 20 more titles to the list. How long this is going to go, I have no idea. It depends on whether we manage to appease the god Cancrazans, who has decreed that all of classical music will be destroyed, but for one work by each composer, because he detests the classical music industry and its awfulness. And that's sort of, you know, an easy thing to detest. But there you go. I mean, I just did a t talk about the acquisition of Hyperion by Universal. That may be construed by some as more evidence that Cancrazans is right to despise the classical music industry. I happen to disagree with that. So, you know, I, I we've discussed that, the God and I, and, and we're of one mind about that. It's, 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 it's neutral as far as his intent goes. We'll have to see what they do rather than what they say. But the list of works here is, is of a very particular kind because there are a million lists of, you know, the most popular this or, you know, classical music for beginners, which is going to be some of that. And those are useful. They're, they're fine. They're fine as far as they go. But this one is a little bit different because what I really wanted and still want and still hope and still expect is that we would be, we would be thinking about composers in a little bit more depth and we would be making selections based not on what our favorite is because nobody cares what our favorite is or what the most popular is because there are many reasons why something becomes popular, only some of which may be musical, but rather what the most characteristic music of a composer's personal style is. And that I really believe we have done. Now, some people have commented on this list and I'm delighted in deleting those comments, but some people have commented saying, it's just a crazy list of junk that you like and stuff that, that's obscure or stuff like that. And some, some things are more obscure than others. Some things are the most popular and obvious choice. Nobody can argue with Bizet's Carmen, for example. And also that the list of composers is random, which it really is, and I'm proud of that, because we're not doing anything in any particular order. Um, there's no way to rank composers from first to last, I mean, that I care about or am willing to do. So, so yes, that's all of those things are true. But as the list grows in comprehensiveness, it covers the world of classical music more comprehensively. And I will say one thing, we have a wonderful, wonderful assortment of stuff. We really do, which has been gathered together partly because, yes, I freely admit, it's some of it's my choice. God forbid I chose. And then some of it um, is your choice. In fact, a lot of it is your choice. All of it is informed by your suggestions so that it is a group endeavor. There is no question about that. And I'm very, very proud of that because you are all incredibly sensitive listeners and intelligent human beings. And I believe that most of you, at least the ones that have made suggestions, have really thought about this question about what do I know of the works of this composer and which ones seem to me to be not just my favorite one, but the most representative representative, the most typical, the most important, you know, the one that I really would want to survive if there could be only one to show the rest of the world who this composer was and what they did. I mean, there will always be arguments about individual titles, but look at what we have achieved. We have chamber music, we have choral music, we have opera, we have orchestral music, symphonies, we have tone poems, we have ballets, we have songs, we have, we have the entire gamut of classical music. We've got film music now, we've got all kinds of cool stuff. Really the range of what classical music can be, from early music to much later music, and whether you agree with my choice or disagree with my choice, that's not the point. The point in looking at the bigger picture is the list as a whole and what it says about our classical music tradition. And so that's why I'm very proud of where we are so far. Um, we will continue 
um, anon, but the next 20, because I need to talk about the first 20, the all 40 of them are listed below where we are today. And I just want to talk about the second group of 20, because it's just a wonderful little piece. And I want to look at them, you know, as a, as a clump, not as um, individual things, because that's what we usually talk about them, you know, one at a time in the individual videos. But the second group began with, with Roussel's second, second symphony, not your household kind of piece, but absolutely an amazing work by an amazing composer. Then we have Copeland's, Copeland's Appalachian Spring, unquestionably a popular choice. Then Grieg's Pier Ginn Suites, another very popular choice. So you see, it's not all just, you know, craziness. The Bartok Sonata for two pianos and percussion, something that really ought to be better known than it is. Incredible masterpiece. Prokofiev's Second Piano Concerto, Rimsky-Korsakov's Opera Suites. We didn't do Scheherazade, but there's such a great album, because we can do an album once in a while, of opera suites. Schoenberg's Piero Lunaire. Oh, yes. A lot of you wanted the Gur leader, which I understand, because that's sort of, you know, the Schoenberg piece for people who hate Schoenberg, but who like, you know, bloated and obscene late romantic expostulations. And I get it, but no, it's not the most characteristic work of Schoenberg. It's not something that really shows us who he was and where he was going and where he'd been. Piero Lunaire does that. And, you know, that's that comes into the category of, you know, if you're only going to tell me what your favorite thing is, but you're not going to consider the composer as a, in the, as a totality, or if you don't know the composer as a totality, listen first, comment second. I always say that, you know, it doesn't work, but I do say that because I know I know when people comment and they haven't watched the video. So anyway, so we, then we have Smetna's Mavlast, the obvious choice, Faya's Nights in the Gardens of Spain, Bizet's Carmen, Elgar's In the South, Sullivan, the Mikado, yay! A push for the greatness of comedy and humorous music and Sullivan as England's greatest composer, which I think we can't emphasize strongly enough. Dvorak's Eighth and Cello Concerto on one disc. Yeah, because... You, you, <laughs> Come on, we couldn't just pick one thing by a composer who did that much great work in that many media. Thank goodness the God Kankrazans lets us take an album or a set once in a while. The Liszt Hungarian Rhapsodies, Monteverdi's Orfeo, the Scarlatti Sonatas, in whatever whatever way you can find them, in a box, one album, whatever, just take your pick because they're fabulous. How can you choose just one? little one you can't it's got to be a collection of some kind the schumann fantasy in c major berg's wozzeck and bernard hermann's psycho the film score yay screech 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 stab 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 fantastic and last but not least the rachmaninoff rhapsody on a theme of paganini that's the top 40 and it's really uh when you add it to the initial 20 we are really beginning to cover, I think, the range of classical music in all of its wonderfulness done by a single work by each composer. And I think that's kind of a special list, a really interesting list. So thank you so much for your input. Keep it coming. I know I caused a little controversy with the last one because it was number 41 was Purcell. And a lot of you did not like the fact that I don't really respond terribly excitingly to Purcell, but that's me. You do. I'm so happy other people do. We only have so much time in our lives to do all of this stuff. Anyway, we're going to keep going and it's going to be marvelous. I guarantee it. I thank you so much for your input, for your insights, for your passionate advocacy. And uh, remember, whether you, I keep the comments or don't keep the comments, I read every single one of them. I really do. And I do take them seriously. Um, I don't always respond. I can't respond to everything anymore, especially now. There's so many of them coming in, but I see them all and I appreciate them all. So thank you for joining me on this journey. Let's keep it going. Take care.